folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today I am sharing a rainbow umbrella. I've actually been planning this for months and months and I haven't been able to get to it, but now that pride is just around the corner, this is perfect timing. So to start, you'll want to download the umbrella template from my website and I will link to that. You'll also need tons of different colors of quilling paper. These are just some examples of what I used. I'm also adding some light brown and a gray. That's going to be for the handle. You can use whatever quilling tool you like. I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the Savvy Slotted Tool from Quilled Creations. This isn't sponsored in any way, but it's really good for when you use a lot of the same motion. I also have my Elmer's glue in my needle nose bottle, and then you're definitely going to need to use a cork board with some wax paper and some pins. The first thing you'll want to do, of course, is to download that umbrella template and then if you need to trim it a bit, I'm cutting mine down a little bit because the paper is a lot bigger than my, uh, my work board here. So just to get those extra bits out of the way and once that is cut to the size that works for me, I'm going to place it underneath my wax paper and pin it in place. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about the wax paper again, so this project is a good refresher in case you've missed any of this technique in the past. So pin that wax paper down in all four corners so it's not gonna go anywhere. And the wax paper is just so the quilling doesn't stick to the board. The template is so I know where to, where to quill. But I'm not gonna be using this template in the end. This is just for reference. First thing I'm going to do is fill in the outlines of the umbrellas. It's going to go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then violet. And to do each of those, I'm going to be making double thick strips. I know I've shown this many, many times in the past, and I will also link to an on edge video where I go into great detail about why and how I make these double thick strips. But I'm just going to demonstrate with the red here because you're going to be making a lot of these strips for this project. These strips are from Quilt Creations as well. I like their paper because it's very bright and it's a nice um, weighted quality. Again, it sounds like this is a sponsored video. It's really not. I just like this brand. Uh, these strips are about 17 inches long. I am going to glue it. You saw there I folded it right down the middle and I'm going to want to get my glue working. Come on. There we go. I'm going to start putting a line of glue right where I folded and run it all the way down to the end. And if I miss a little bit of a spot, I'm going to go back and add a dot. You want to make sure you just have a steady line from the middle where you folded it all the way to the end and then fold it back over holding the fold side is usually what I do. I kind of pretend it's like a zipper and I just zip my fingers right down and turn it and do it again. And this is gonna make sure that there's no air pockets and it's completely glued. Turn it and turn it and turn it and run your fingers in every direction. And what that does is makes this paper nice and thick and it also makes it really strong. So it's great to do outlines. And what I would probably do is go ahead and make all the colors for this. You're gonna need the red, and you're gonna need one for every other section of this rainbow umbrella. You're gonna need a yellow, and an orange, and a green, and a blue, and a purple. So I would go ahead and while, you got your, while it's on your mind, just make all of those, get it out of the way. You'll also need to make some brown. That's gonna be for the handle. So, like I said, we're gonna do the outline of each section of this umbrella first. Once your strips have dried for a little bit, they'll be much easier to, to keep in the shape you want. If you try to do this while these double thick strips are still a little bit damp with the glue, they won't hold the shape as well. I start off right at the top where all the points are gonna meet and I kind of run my paper through my fingernails again to bend it like a ribbon. And with a little bit of dots of glue on the edge, I'm going to just put some pins here and there just to keep the shape. 
and I'll do one right in the corner. That'll be really good for where that point's gonna be. And there's another one on the edge there. You don't have to go crazy with the pins. Do not worry about any pin holes in your template. Again, this is just for reference. So you're not gonna be using that later on. This is not your final work board or your final mounting board or anything. So as you saw there, I bent it right around that pin that was in the corner, added a couple more dots to that underside bend, two more pins under there to keep that shape, bend it back down, and you guessed it, I'm going to put another pin in that point, and that gives me a nice crisp, again, a nice crisp point to really keep the shape how I want it. And I'm gonna fold this one back around, pinch, pinch, and just kind of tuck it in there. A few more dots of glue. And right where it's gonna meet the first uh, space where I started, I added a little bit of glue because I'm going to snip the excess paper off I'm not sure if I mentioned that a pair of scissors would help when I listed out the supplies for this, and I apologize for that, but yep, a small pair of scissors, you know, keep that in your, your quilling toolkit. That's gonna come in handy in projects from time to time, but anyway, so once I get it all arranged, now is the time to move things around however you need to, add a pin or two, add an extra drop of glue, because once you start letting this dry, and you start adding the other sections of your rainbow, it's gonna be tricky to move these around. Now, after I snip off the excess, uh, if you have a little bit of extra glue that you can see, you can go ahead and brush those away. You're not gonna notice them at the end, but sometimes it's nice to have just a neater project as you go. So let the first section sit for a few minutes, and then you can start moving on to the next one. Now at this point my red paper has set for a few minutes and I'm able to move the pins without it collapsing or moving anywhere. I'm going to start the next section. This is going to be done pretty much exactly the same way except we're going to be adding a line of glue along the edge of the color before it. So I'm going to take my small container and I'm going to run some glue all the way down because I don't want there to be any space from section to section. So in order to have that, I really need to get these two different colors bumped up against each other. So add a little bit of glue all the way down the edge and make sure that this orange strip, again, this is another double thick one like we made for the red, and do it all the way down and make sure it's just nice and set in there with no space between. Another pin for the corner and that's what it should look like. And what you're gonna do is finish this one the same way. Add some dots of glue here and there along the edge, add some pins where you need to, and then after this color sets for a minute or two, you can go in with the yellow and so on and so forth. I know that sounds like it's gonna take a long time, but it really doesn't. Once you just start moving through the colors, this part does go pretty quickly. Once you have every section filled in while you are on the outline frame of mind, you can go ahead and do this straight rectangle piece in a brown color. I'm using just a light brown 
again from Quilt Creations. It's made the same way as the other double thick strips are and in the same type of way I start with a little bit of glue on the lines and then add some pins where I want it to stay set and need to turn a corner and run it up the other side, trim off the excess and that's it. The next part we're going to fill in is the little metal J at the bottom of the handle. I'm sure that has a real name. I don't know what it is called, but the little part at the very bottom after the wood uh, section where you hold the umbrella. And all I'm doing is taking two inch strips of a kind of a medium gray and rolling it into a tight coil and finishing it up with a little bit of blue. That's all for that one. Nothing fancy. Just little tiny pegs and I think I ended up using seven or eight I can't recall the exact number right now feel free to count along on the video but either way it's just a few and just gonna start connecting them at the bottom of the handle and then go one by one all the way around that section to fill in the J While you're waiting for the edges of your umbrella to set, you can start making the tight coils for the insides. What I did is I chose three different shades of every color of the rainbow. So for example, I'm using three different colored reds here. One's a deep rose, one is the same standard red that I use for the outline, and then one is a little bit darker crimson. And I'm going to, did not measure any of this, I just ripped random strips off of each color, glued them end to end, so there's like, like one long strip with three different colors in it, and then just rolled it on up into a tight coil. So it just looks like a solid circle of bands of different shades of red. And this is where this Savvy Slotted Tool comes in handy. I've done a blog post about it way back when, but I've never actually shown it on this channel, I don't think. And what it is, it is just a slotted quilling tool. So that part's pretty standard, but the two pieces turn independently of each other. So you don't have to turn your wrists while you're quilling. You can just kind of move your fingers back and forth. And it's really great for those who do a lot of quilling. So this project in particular was a good one to share this because you're gonna be making a lot of these tight coils. You're gonna need a whole bunch for every color. Um, and that can get kind of tedious after a while. Or you know, if you do have repetitive motion injuries like carpal tunnel syndrome or something like that, this is really helpful for those 
people. So I just turned it all the way to the end, took it off my tool, adding a dot of blue, and getting that to set. And that is it. There is one of the tight coils for the inside of this rainbow. And then, just to make it a little bit more interesting, not to have it all flat and one dimensional, I used a bottom of a straight pin just to kind of dome out the center just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more interest um, to the finished product. And you're gonna to need to make a whole bunch of these. And also what I would do is mix up the way you do the colors. So sometimes the lighter color in the front, in the middle, the darker one, just so they're all different. And now it's time to actually start filling in the umbrella. This is the fun part after all this work. You're going to need, in addition to those three colored tight coils, you're also gonna need some small pegs to fill in some of the smaller spaces and in between the larger coils. So just as a refresher, all that means is just like those gray pieces that we used for the bottom of the handle, we're just gonna take a couple of inches. You might need even less in some places. If you have a really small area you wanna fill in, use about an inch or so. Roll it all the way to the end. You can keep it on your tool while you do that. And this one decided to be goofy. So we're just gonna turn this one into a piece for the corner instead. So this one I let open up just a little bit because it didn't want to glue. Pinch it real good on the side and it's a good demo for what I was going to show you next which was how to fill in this corner piece and you'll probably need to do this for every color. That's what I would recommend but it was just a little bit of a more open coil with a pinch on the end just like a standard teardrop. So anyway back to the plan after that piece is in, then you can just start filling in. I didn't go in with a real set pattern in mind or anything. I just tried to mix up the colors as best as I could and kind of started with the bigger ones. I didn't want to have, you know, two rings that looked alike next to each other. This sounds really fiddly and complicated, but it wasn't. It was just kind of fun just to play around with it. In the bottom corners of the umbrellas where the points are, that's where those small pegs come in handy. Just kind of plop them in there to fill out that space. Doesn't matter if they're super snug because once you really do get most of this filled in, it does look very filled in. You'll see it in the finished product. But, you know, if you have tweezers for this part, that always comes in handy. Just fill in as you go. Gonna make you stay and watch me do every single one of these sections but the process is pretty much the same find three different shades of the same color make a bunch of rings and then have fun filling them in in whatever pattern you like I almost forgot to show how I filled in the rest of the wooden part of the handle on the umbrella um, I just made little s scrolls which means I took about one inch of brown paper, the same brown I made for the rest of the handles, and rolled one side in one direction, turned it around, flipped it upside down, and did the same thing to the other side. So it just looks like a little oops, S. And you can, if you don't like how they look, you can kind of unroll them and roll them back up a little bit. But that is the shape we're looking for. And then after making a bunch of those, I just wanted to lay them down right in the channel of that handle and kind of interlock them. So I put one down with a little bit of glue to keep it in place once I liked it and then I would put the next one so that the S was kind of above it. And then they all sort of locked into each other. 
little bit hard to see for some reason with this brown color. You'll get a better image of this um, at the end once this is mounted. But again, these are just a bunch of little S shapes, little S scrolls that are locked into each other. Just trying to continue the pattern of having a lot of curved lines in this piece and not a lot of straight lines besides the outline. And now for the final part of this monster project, we're going to be making some tricolored raindrops to fall on our umbrella. So just like before, I have three different colors of blue, one that's really pale and then a medium tone and then a darker one. And I'm going to be tearing different size strips of this as well. So I'm starting with the lightest color and I'm tearing a small strip and then I do a second row of that same lighter color, a little bit longer, and then trying to hold it all together. The next color a little bit longer and then another row that same medium blue just a little bit longer and then I'm going to finish this with one row of the darkest blue that's again just a little bit longer so again they are all level on one side and then they get a little bit longer than the first one on the other side and this will all make sense in a second and I want to add a little bit of glue between each strip on the side where they're all lined up together not on the side where they're shingled that is now set and that's what you should be looking at at this point all together on one side and then shingled on the other I'm going to run a tool or your fingernail or a paintbrush or something like you're curling a ribbon on the other side. And then we're going to glue the other end, pull it up so it meets the top one by one. And what that's going to do, first layer should look like that. What that's going to do after you get each layer glued right at the tippy top, it's gonna look like a drop that's gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Here, you can already see it forming, bigger as it falls. And it also is gonna get a little bit darker as it falls, sort of an ombre effect, little raindrop. There's that, and then just the two more layers. And I'm not gonna demonstrate how to make all of these. I think I ended up with six or seven on the template, but just make different size strips. They don't have to be exactly the size of the template. The template's just a guide, just so you get an idea. Um, I know that when I finished mine, we're not exactly the right size as the template, but they should sort of look like this guy when they're all done. So at this point, we have our entire umbrella filled in. It looks so beautiful. I love the rainbow. It's so pretty. Like I said, I've been planning this project for a really long time. So to finally have it done just makes me so happy. But once I'm ready to take it off my wax paper, I'm going to go ahead and take a needle tool or something thin like that and just run it along underneath just to loosen up any glue that has kept it in place. Remember, this is not our final mounting surface. We're just using this as a place to build our quilling on. I don't even have the raindrops glued onto this part. I just made them and poked them to the side. This is pretty sturdy. This is one of those quillings that has so much paper to it. You can really kind of move it around a bit. Oh, that piece fell out. It happens. That's not a problem. And I also noticed at this point that my handle is sort of coming off a bit so I'm going to gently remove that and I will attach that solo later on. Um, if you see any little bits of glue that are kind of on the side there's one on that purple bit there. Let me get it into focus so you can see it but I'm just going to use my scissors and just snip that slightly so it doesn't go over 
the edge. Most of these, if there's any glue, it's going to be hidden pretty well because this is so densely packed. But anything along the edge that you don't like, just go ahead and snip that off gently. It's, it's pretty good. You might notice more of them down in the handle where it's a little bit more open. But what I'm going to do now is get it lined up on my finished surface. This is just a plain white five by seven piece of mat board. I buy these in bulk and because most of my projects are around the same size, this works out really nicely for my use. And once I have it where I want it, I flip it over and I'm just applying glue all over the back of this. I don't have to be too careful because this part, like I said before, is so packed with paper, you're not gonna really see underneath it at all. So I can be pretty generous and not very careful with where I'm putting this glue. But once I get enough of it covered that I don't think it's gonna move at all, I can carefully turn it back over and before I drop it, make sure that it's straight and exactly where I want it because I don't want to have to move this once I place it so ugh. right there I have used in the past like rulers and things like that to make sure that everything's straight this time I kind of just went for it so whatever feels right to you to get these straight by all means do that I do like to after I get it down where I want it brush along the sides to make sure there's no glue sticking out anywhere and then it's my very sophisticated weight system to keep it where I'd like it for just a minute or two. Very fancy around here. And now it's time to fix my mistakes. So get, get this silver piece glued back on and that little green bob that fell out earlier get that place back in wherever it came from and for some reason I didn't get the images of the clouds being glued on I have it for different uh, formats but I didn't do it for YouTube I'm not sure what I was doing um, but this, the same process applies as mounting this umbrella. So you're gonna take your raindrop, you're gonna apply a little bit of glue to the back and then place them where you want on the, the finished surface. Just be careful not to add too much glue because you might be able to see it through the different layers of the raindrops. Oh, there we go, I do have one. That's pretty much it. <laughs> not missing much but I think that is that I'm so glad to have been able to do this project I love the colors I love the brightness of it I'm just really happy with how it turned out as always I will leave any links you need in the description box below the video. I will leave a link to the template for this. I will also leave um, supplies that I use, any links you need for those down below. I would love to hear what you think of this one. I'd love to hear how you plan on using it. If you're just gonna use it as a little display item like this, you can put it on a card or I don't know, whatever you think. I just think it's, it's just fun, so. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified next time I make a video. And in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.